Hey, 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 happy Aloha Friday. Here we go. And uh, it is Friday. Thank God. And uh, I don't know who has some fun stuff planned for this weekend. Are, I know a lot of people are dealing with some pretty nasty weather. And uh, we ourselves over on Kauai yesterday got hit really bad. And all uh, with pretty bad rain, thunderstorms and all that. But it's a weekend. You can't ask for anything better than that. So... Anyhow, I have been checking over here in chat. Let me pull over chat. And hey, hey, Lioness, how you doing, my dear? And uh, and yeah, BC, by the way, hey, hey, my dear. Um, I've got the poll for today actually about Kamari. Um, a lot of us who've been here for a while may remember Kamari, um, her case was one of the first ones I covered. I mean, Monkey, Ariel, Kamari are the like trio that I started with. And her case, something about her case just grabbed me and it, it affected me on a level that I didn't think was possible. Um, this little baby was forced to endure things physically that no child should ever have to endure. But beyond that, the one person who is supposed to protect you from everything in the world, one of the two people, mom, dad, okay, her mother was not there to protect her. Her mother was the reason why she was attacked. Her mother is the reason why she found herself in a place that took her away from this world. And, uh, and it all came down to her mom wanting money so bad that she was willing to sell her child. It's, it's infuriating. And I know a lot of you guys don't know Kamari's case because it was a while ago. We are going to go back and visit it some today, mainly because the monster who killed her had his day in court. And yes, he had said he was guilty. He finally owned up to that. And all, uh, but it is a death penalty case. So he had to go through the court, uh, okay, through trial. So we are going to go through that because it was a three and a half day um, trial. And we have the guilty verdict in that case. So we are going to go through that. But we have a couple other updates I wanted to do also. But Kamari was a heartbreak breaking case just all the way around it was um so yeah you got it and there's miss in the bushes how you doing my dear and joy is in the house and uh, you don't know you know this is it's hard following these cases but when a trial date is set and you see justice happen you know there is something right in the world okay people will stand up and they will say no that's not a no no her father Kamari's father is his whole life was changed in the matter of a couple hours and he was trying to do what he thought was the greatest thing in the world which was allow his little girl to develop a relationship with her mom I mean that was one of the most selfless things you could do, okay, when you're divorced and separated and all that, to say, you know what, yes, we may not get along, but you know what, I want you and your daughter to have an amazing relationship. Okay, my little girl needs to have her mom in her life. And then her mom goes and destroys that life. And uh, was it just 15 minutes away from you, Avery? Wow. By the way, hey, hey, Avery. Um, wow. Yeah, this case, I remember it actually was breaking. And what we're gonna get into that. I want to get to the first two cases real quickly. But um I remember I had just done a missing Mondays and I had just logged off. Okay, turned off the live, and I was sitting at my computer, and the information came out that she had gone missing. It was one of those cases, okay, where, and we're going to watch a video where mom's talking about her little girl and how she'd gone missing and, oh, she would want her Christmas gifts given away and all these, all the things. 
I have never wanted to hurt someone so bad in my life. I'll be honest, gang. I'm just going to be honest. This is going to have a lot of trigger warnings when we get to this part of the live. Um, so, and I will warn you when the time comes up. Yeah, yep, Phoenix, Phoenix City, Alabama. And also, and yeah, it's so important for us to follow these cases and ensure that these children, these teenagers, these adults, these senior citizens have a voice even when that voice is taken away from them. And also, so we're going to allow notifications to get out and try to get, okay, let people have a moment to get in here. However, I did want to give everyone a couple quick updates on Jillian and Veronica, uh, the two mothers that went missing, and also Blake and London Devon. Uh, for those of you who were not here Monday, yes, huge. These will be huge trigger warnings for sure. Um, yeah, the Christmas present, that is just... Mm. Frustrating. Uh, Blake and London Devon actually are the two that I talked about on Monday. The two children who, well, teenagers, okay, early 20s, who have not been seen since years and years. And, uh, and there has been a little bit of an update on that. Let me actually, let's start with that one actually real quick because there's not much here. Um, but there's just enough to share with you guys. Um, let me real quickly change this. So anyone who's following. So these are, okay, London and Blake Devon, who, as we talked about on Monday, um, had been adopted by a woman who later on, the two disappeared at different times of their lives, okay, both in teenage years or early 20s in one case. Um, and the first one, London, was never reported missing. And uh, we found out she was missing when the report finally was made about Blake. So police are in there, find out Blake is not the only missing child that this lady adopted. So um, there hasn't been much updates on this. However, I did want to share, and I did this on the community page also, um, the the chief of police over, okay, in Fayetteville actually did report that during the investigation to locate 17-year-old Blake Devon and 27-year-old London Devon, the police department and FBI developed information that led Fayetteville detectives to locate partial skeletal human remains. Now, guys, even though these people were just reported missing, we know they've been missing for years. Okay, they, no one knew they were missing because no one ever reported the missing. Um, what we do know at this time that there's no confirmation as to who these remains belong to. Okay, are they Blake's? Uh, okay, are they London's? Are they not even related, potentially? We don't know exactly where they were found either. So that's another issue. We're not quite sure where they were found. We do know a few days ago, the FBI and the police were over at the Devon home, okay, on Barry Adele Drive. Um, they were there with hazmat suits, all sorts of stuff. However, we're being told that that is not where these remains were found. So... There is no further information than that at this point. Uh, it is a potential thing that might at least give family a little bit of closure. But right now, I couldn't even comprehend being the families in these cases, biological families in these cases right now, because there is no idea what's going on. And there's it could be anything. But there is this, so please keep families in your thoughts, keep them in your prayers. Um, I'll let you know if I hear anything else. Um, we are being told they're not going to give us any more updates at this point. Um, maybe later we'll find out. I'm sure we'll find out more at a future date. But for right now, that's all we're being told about. So um, the other I wanted to update y'all on is, let me pull this one down. And our two mothers from okay so jillian kelly veronica butler this is the two mothers six children between the two of them um jillian was on their actually veronica was on her way to go see her children when the two of them went missing 
Um, yeah, Avery, there's so few articles out there right now on the two Devon children and on, I'm hoping more will pop up because they have a whole history that no one knows about right now and it needs to be filled in. So I wanted to pull this up because this came out this morning on the Elizabeth Vargas reports, um, show and there's not a lot we're still waiting for real updates we know the fbi is involved we know the local police are involved uh why is the fbi involved um are they the lead no they're not the lead um but what is good do they have technology did they ever find any of the uh, women's phones we don't know we do know still, and this is going to talk about it a little bit, that there is the custody issue that could be part of this thing. Uh, there's, hey, Kathleen, how are you doing, my dear Kathleen? Hope you're having a good day. And also, um, I don't know. You guys in chat, let me know what you guys think. If you've been following this case, do you think that that vehicle because the vehicle was found about, okay, off of the main highway, okay, um, not what we thought initially. Do you think the car was driven by them to that place and that's where whatever crime happened occurred? Or do you think that vehicle was dumped there? We're getting new information. Okay, this is going to talk about some blood that was found not only in the car, but I'm hearing some stuff about outside of the car. But um, be interested in hearing what you guys think. You're hanging in there, Kathleen. Hanging in there is good. Hey, I keep saying every morning I wake up is good. Waking up is good every morning. And it's even better when I go to sleep, though. I will say that. So, so I'm going to go ahead. Hopefully volume is good. I think I've got closed captions on here. So we're going to watch this video real quickly um, just so we can all get a little bit of an update. Because finally, I think what's happening now... Now that we have the regular media, general media out there, okay, we know we had social social media, YouTube, investigators, all that going in that direction, which is, I'll be honest, I think it's a little dangerous also because we've heard about people being followed, being threatened, things like that. Um, and I think people need to be very, very careful about it. What's great with the regular media being involved they're contacting FBI. They're pushing. They're being that squeaky wheel. Okay, not just on our small little channels, but the squeaky wheel on these huge nationwide television channels. Okay, television shows and all. A lot of people are wondering, is it connected with, okay, the whole um, custody case with, um, we know there what they were slowly leading up to the point where, okay, Veronica was getting more and more time with the children. Okay, it was still being supervised, which is why Jillian was there. But it was becoming more and more. And so we'll have an idea what happens with that. So, and uh, so let's go ahead and check that one out right now. And here we go. All right, now to a News Nation exclusive on a story we have been following since the very beginning. Tomorrow marks 14 days since two mothers went missing along a rural Oklahoma highway, gone without a trace. And tonight you'll hear new details only on News Nation about that bitter custody battle that most likely is at the center of this case. Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly were traveling so to Oklahoma to pick up Butler's two small children. Their car was found off the State Highway 95 on March 30th, way down a dirt road for a weird place for that car to stop. So nearly two weeks later, authorities in Oklahoma have not shared any updates uh, for more than a week since revealing that investigators suspect foul play. We do know the FBI is helping in the investigation, but here's some sobering stats. According to the FBI, about 70% of all reported missing persons are found and returned within 48 to 72 hours. It's now been 300 hours since Butler and Kelly were last seen. All right, so joining us now is News Nation producer Allison Weiner. She's been digging into this story. Allison, what have you learned about the evidence in and around that abandoned car that leads police to believe there was foul play? Well, there was a lot of discussion early, you know, that we've already learned that there was some blood that was. 
I'm going to stop you guys right now and just let you know, right after this, there is a new, just about one hour ago, so I missed it. Uh, okay, within the last hour, I've been getting ready for Kamari's case. Um, BC, thank you. Thank you big time. We are getting more information about, I'm going to finish watching this because what's going to come up next from Cuomo, um, it looks like Word is coming and I have not watched it yet to know exactly, but it's looking like there's evidence that both Jillian and Veronica were shot. Um, we're going to share that in just a second here, but first let's finish this up so you can kind of get the preliminary information from earlier this morning. It was found in the car and that was something that uh, the police, you know, said indicated that there was some foul play. Um, there was blood, a tiny bit of blood in the car, not a huge amount. But what we heard, what we've now learned is that there was also blood outside of the car, two separate puddles of blood. Um, and the reason I, I was wondering and I asked my source or several sources um, why the press wasn't able to see that is that those after the police were able to do initial investigation. Those puddles were kind of dried up with um, dirt, and and so they covered it up. They they covered it up so that reporters they wouldn't take pictures yeah. of it. What? Okay. Which is interesting. We're keeping everything has been hidden so well in this case. Okay, um, and I mean, not a lot of information being shared out. Okay, we've all said from the beginning. Does that mean that police know what happened and they're just trying to create that airtight case? Sounding to me like, yeah, that's exactly what they've been doing. They've been creating that case and making sure it is freaking airtight. And uh, so I'm hoping that's what it means. And by the way, hey, cat mama, and uh, enjoy it. Yeah, this, God, I'm hoping it's not part of that. I'm really, uh, I, I'm down in my heart. I wouldn't be surprised, but I'm hoping not because these, t the children to know that as they get older, that all of it's related to custody of them. That's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking enough that they may have lost their mother in both these cases. Okay, exactly. so we've been talking about this custody battle between Veronica Butler and her uh, and the father of the two children. Um, Veronica Butler had only supervised visits with her kids uh, every week or two. Exactly, Why Joy. did she lose custody of the children? Well, I was able to find out that it turns out that there was an allegation of sexual abuse of the children. Right. It's not by Veronica or not, and not by the father, but by right. somebody um, it, within the family circle. Yeah, we've talked about that before. Okay, it had been alleged and substantiated by um, child services or whatever the word is for it there that um, a external family member, okay, a more, okay, uh, uncle basically was involved in abuse, okay, of the children. And that is what set up this initial okay custody thing and that based on that the grandmother of the father Allegedly. went forward with um trying to gain her custody and made and according to the father made him say some things that weren't totally true and that is uh and managed to gain custody the father managed to gain custody but then the father was sent to prison under domestic violence um, uh, allegation, and he now is in rehab in Oklahoma City, um, and the grandmother has custody. All right, we're looking at a picture of the father right now, Wrangler Rickman. I believe this is his mugshot. Um, his children but had wasn't no he chance. just released uh, a few just days ago, a few days another. before these two women disappeared? Actually, not. He was. During the time they disappeared, the police have been able to confirm that he was in the rehab facility. Okay. And they confirmed it, and my source confirmed it. Okay. So, but there's a hearing. There was a hearing scheduled this coming week Sweet. on the whole custody yeah. issue. Veronica Butler was fighting to get her kids back. Yes. Um, there, there was a custody hearing scheduled, and basically what happened is that Veronica and the grandmother would exchange custody at this 
an abandoned gas station called Four Corners, and they had done it many times before. And they were on their way to Four Corners to do the custody exchange. I'm and, 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 um, and I'm just curious, um, this custody exchange, do we know anything? Was it amicable? I can't imagine it was if the grandmother had helped launch these um, sexual uh, abuse. And you can, guys. I'm going to... You know me, I got to play all sides and try to look at it from all sides, okay? Think about if you were a grandparent or even a parent of someone and you find out something like that happened, you're going to get nervous. You're going to get worried. Okay, these are after all your children or your grandchildren, okay? Or I mean, hell, if I had found something out like that about my niece, I'd be a nervous wreck. Okay, I'd be worried for her. I would be fighting for my niece. And uh, um, you develop this in your head. And then over time, it just hate breeds, okay? Contempt hate breeds further and further. And I'm hoping we didn't just get to the point where there was so much like, oh, no, I'm not going to let the children go back there. So something happened. I'm really hoping that's not it. Allegations against the mother. That must have been a fraught situation between the two. It's a very, it was a very fraught situation between the two. And the father has said that his own mother, the grandmother, like forced him to say certain things and that she threatened to shoot him in the head if he didn't say it. And it's in court documents, that comment. And we at News Nation have obtained and been able to review those court documents. Some so we know that re this is not the custody. We thought it was a custody dispute, but this is a volatile custody dispute with a lot of anger. Um, coming from both sides. This is uh, what we found in the court documents that the plaintiff further stated that he had been threatened numerous times by his mother. That's the grandmother who has custody of the children now, that she would kill him, shoot him in the head if he didn't do what she told him to do. So he wow. did what she told him to do. And, yeah, a lot of and remember, one of the problems we've had in this case is no one is speaking. So there's this thought, are people fighting? Are there, is there a lot of small town discussions going on okay is there any threatening going on is there anything going on that would be making people scared to act and if you're if what we're hearing here is true which it sounds like it is okay at least verbally there's definitely higher pushing Okay, if I want something done, you're going to make sure it gets done. And uh, um, I guess with the third party there, the judge thought it would be safe. Yeah. And I think most of us probably would have thought, oh, is anyone going to do anything to hurt someone if there's a third party there? And uh, the problem is this. In these types of cases with a third party there, normally you're talking a big city. Okay, you're going, okay, if you live Honolulu let's say, okay, I'm going down to a Starbucks meeting, okay, and you're there, you have tons of people around you, things like that, so it's a lot more public, okay, you try to do a public location in the area that this all happened, there's no such thing as public, you might as well be in a abandoned factory with no one around you, because there is no one around you, so, yeah, Avery, I, I'm getting more and more worried about that every day. People there, yeah, a lot of people there are afraid of that family, Allison. We've found out from several reporters who've been down there on the scene. Yeah, you know, I mean, reporting on 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 custody issues or, yeah, or a potential, you know, I mean, that's it's it's difficult and dangerous work, but it's work that needs to be done because we need to try to help right. find these women. Thanks so much for watching. Go to join. Okay, so that's where it had been left as of this morning. Now, this is the new. Thank you, BC. BC actually just shared this with me. And it's new details which are now coming out uh, on the Cuomo show. Uh, okay, oh, let me put that share screen. This is this is definitely, I have not seen this video. Uh, anything that I'm hearing coming from this group, I feel they have vetted it. Um, so I feel comfortable with the information. It's mainstream media. Um,
this is God. Okay, let's watch this together. Correspondent Nancy Liu on the ground trying to get answers, of course, and former FBI agent and News Nation Law and Justice correspondent Jennifer Coffin Daffer. Coffin Daffer, you and I will hear uh, how uh, Nancy can feed what we understand about this. Nancy, thank you for joining us. Who have you been talking to, and what do we now know that we didn't know? Well, Chris, law enforcement still not talking, but. This is new. Sources are telling News Nation producer Allison Weiner that the evidence includes blood inside and outside of the women's car. And according to her information, the women were shot. What happened to them remains a mystery. I did get through to the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigations today. They would not say much, but they did indicate that this investigation is progressing and they did reveal that other locations are being searched. They would not say where, they would not say why. But as you alluded to, the custody case may be at the heart of- Wow. First of all, hey, Angie, welcome, welcome, my dear. That, okay, so now we're definitely being told enough that the blood, blood in the car, okay, it doesn't sound like blood bath type thing, but blood in the car and out of the car. If, this is my thing, and there are ways they can, how are they figuring out that the two were shot? Now, again, this is not verified information. This is coming from sources. Um, but for them to come out on News Nation with this level of information, it's got to be pretty, pretty well vetted. I would say at this point, um, are there casings in the area? Did they find casings in the car or out in the grass or anything like that? Um, very, yeah, they're definitely not searching there. So it does make sense. Yeah. It's, did they finish? What was it they found? Are they, is there, there are other locations. They just said that. There's multiple other locations. Have they found other locations with actual evidence? Are they finding more blood in another location? This is me, speculation ge in general. Okay, with, um, hey, Sleuth, how you doing, my dear? And, uh, hey, Hawaiian time, Hawaiian time, Hawaiian time is a national time. It, it Trust me, it is. That's the way it is. That's all I can think is that it's got to be shell casings they're finding somewhere. Um, but are they, where are they finding? Because they're not, the search of the location itself was never really, really heavy. Okay. Um, if anything happened at that place, okay, on the road where it was pulled off and all, you would have thought they would have gone deeper into the, okay, the grass area and stuff like that. So one of these other multiple areas that we're hearing about, are they finding more potentially blood going on? Are they finding casings? Is that why they're now able to say, hey, sleuth, no problem. No problem, my dear. How are you feeling, by the way? Hope you're feeling better and also, and all. But I'm not sure if you did hear sleuth as of an hour ago. Well, we don't know. That's what we're saying. What they are saying is that unless it still comes out. I haven't watched this whole video. BC just shared it with us. Um, and we're only a minute in, but they are saying, sources are saying that the women were shot. So we're trying to figure out what that means. How can they say that? Uh, it's News Nation. I don't see News Nation coming out there and making too many wild speculations without trying to vet the information first. Um, so anyhow, let's get going. Of this investigation, and this includes an eight-year-old son and a six-year-old daughter, Chris. And four other children. Nancy, let me ask you one more thing. Uh, the idea, now I know that this isn't necessarily relevant legally, but in terms of reporting uh, and, and understanding the humanity of the situation, what do we know about the father and his family in terms of by reputation? Well, this is, like many custody cases, a very ugly 
custody case. Yeah. There are a lot of accusations back and forth. Now, Veronica Butler, uh, she lost custody of the kids back in 2022 because she had been moving hey, around. Matthew, uh, she wasn't Matthew. able to hold a job. So Wrangler Cole Rickman got custody of the kids and then uh, he ran into legal trouble. So his mother has been caring for the two kids. Um, we understand that due to uh, the court, custody court documents indicate that the mother has mm -hmm. alleged abuse when the kids were with Veronica. Early on, Veronica had claimed the kids were abused when they were with Wrangler. So it's so been- So in general, yeah, like you just said, very, very ugly. Some of the stuff was substantiated. Um, again, though, uh, you never know with cases, especially in small towns, how all that ends up working. Um, but these poor two kiddos are the ones who are being held hostage, basically, in the end. They're the ones being forced to be a tug of war in between not two parents, but a grandmother on top of it. Ah, uh, Robbie, yes, we're close, we're close. Just a couple away, so if you haven't subbed up, sub up. We're almost there, very close. Yeah, and Sleuth, you know me, we've talked about this before, that there has been a custody case involved in this from the get-go. 2019, I think, is when I saw things starting to get filed on it. Um, but you never want to just jump to that, because you know what? How many times have we jumped to things and found out we jumped the wrong direction? direction but it seems more and more that people are getting very concerned about that especially concerning now i don't know sleuth for example if you heard this um but they were just saying on the last um clip that we just watched that grandma actually threatened her son okay shooting him if he did not say things at court at one point and that's from court transcripts so definitely very highly volatile, um, kind of fits with the level of, I want to say, quiet hush-hush that we're getting from people involved in it, that could there be a lot of, okay, don't you dare say anything, we don't speak ill about anyone, things like that. So here we go. In a back and forth, a lot of accusations and a very messy yeah, beautiful custody case. Kids. Nancy, I appreciate it. And uh, good on you for mentioning your producer, Allison Weiner, who's one of the best reporters in the business. I've known her a long time, but uh, much respect to you for giving her uh, that name check. Good for you. So, Absolutely. Jennifer Coffendaffer, what do you make of uh, the advance of understanding blood inside, blood outside, and that that may have been uh, gunshot related? Oh, it's, okay, it's critical. It's what we believe to have happened because there weren't clues in and around the scene in terms of them being in that vehicle anymore. And once we knew there were signs of foul play, we figured it must be blood. But the big key to me is this information about being shot. And that makes so much sense when we're talking about bringing the FBI in. Because when you bring the FBI in, you bring in the ballistics, you bring in the lab capabilities. We were thinking tech, you bring in ballistics. all the people that can help in terms of fingerprint analysis and DNA analysis that is going to be critical in a case like this. Hey, thank you for watching. Okay. Please go to news. Okay, so yeah, that's where we're going. And yeah, I was trying to figure out earlier, okay, why would they have brought FBI in? Because FBI is not in the lead. Yes, we're between two states, so that could be something. But what other potentials? And I was thinking, well, could they have found the phone and needed the tech side of the phone? Um, ballistics now definitely fits. Because this is a small town. This is, I guarantee you, this police department has never had to, the sheriff's department, Never. So you have OSBI, of course. Um, now you got the FBI involved. Wow. This is really going to be, oh, God, these poor. I just think, don't forget, at the foot, we're looking at custody cases, all this other stuff. In the end, guys, this comes down to six children whose moms are missing. Okay, six children who go to bed every night, possibly for the rest of their life, 
never being able to see mom again. Okay, you've got loved ones, mothers, fathers who are missing their daughter. And we got to remember those as we go through this. That's who it's coming down to. And that's exactly if they, and we're not hearing ballistics is what's just being thrown around as a possibility for FBI, but that would mean shell casings, which would mean shot. Um, so things do start making more and more sense there. Uh, oh God, this is just getting worse and worse by the moment. Um, we do know as the time goes on, the chances become less and less that we have a good ending. Um, but it, oh gosh. Oh, go hug your, yeah. Hug your kiddos. Okay, trust me, that's why I got my fur babies. I hug my fur babies every time when things like this get going. It's just crazy. So, um, so let's do this. So we kind of, that's about where we are. You can't delete your own comments. Is that it? <laughs> Troublemaker. What are you saying that you want to delete now, my dear? And uh, so, um, anyhow, and uh, uh, let me pull us up to here. So, we, yeah, there's not a lot more. I'm going to keep an eye on the Jillian Veronica case. Um, I have a funny feeling the police and FBI, OSBI, they know exactly where they're going on this. It's just finishing the dot to dot, creating the picture, making sure they have all their I's dotted, their T's crossed, and then we hopefully will see an arrest coming up pretty soon. And also, um, anyhow, okay, next, Kamari. Let me see how you were doing in chat on that because I did ask, this case is an older case. It was one of my first, as I mentioned at the top of the live, one of my first three cases that just killed me. Okay, I mean, Ariel, Monkey, and Kamari were there right at the beginning. And I had just finished the Missing Mondays and had logged off. And the news came out about a missing girl. And this missing girl, um, they couldn't find mom was calling, trying to look for her. Okay. So I went right back on live. I actually, it's one of the few times that I logged right back in and we went right back live. Um, so it looks like I'm going to end the poll right now so you guys can see what it looks like. The majority of people actually don't. Okay remember her case and that makes sense because it was a couple years ago uh 33 percent of you do remember the case five percent yeah but it's hazy okay so i am going to read a lot more than i was going to because i think it's import important for everyone to hear her whole story but this is Cummery. okay up in the corner there let me change uh this right here so we've got that okay um Camry Holland, little sweetheart, okay, who had gone missing, five years old. You remember this like it was yesterday, especially with you living so nearby, for sure, Avery, and all. Um, very quickly after she went missing, she was tracked down, and they found her remains. She had died. And she had been killed. Over the next couple weeks, things unfolded. And basically, the long story came together as this. Her mother, who you are seeing up in the upper corner there, that monster up there, sold her daughter to the guy below her for $2,500 for one hour. Kamari. Yep, exactly. Um, sold her her daughter for $2,500 for one hour, fill in the blank. We have found out since then that he had never planned on giving any money to mom. Okay, first of all, why mom would even think of something like this? Yeah, I know, figuring out how to pronounce her name was, I, I know I was had issues with that too for quite a while. Um, yeah, buckle down guys, trigger warnings, Please, please, trigger warnings in this case. Um, I very seldom jump to trigger warnings, but this case I am going to actually um, 
remind everyone that they're in fact I'm going to do a banner on this one because it is we're going to be reading some stuff from the newspaper um uh, from the newspaper from um the trial and it's not easy to hear I'll be honest with you at all okay let me just do that okay got it so um her dad had full custody of Kamari. Um, mom did not have custody. In general, wasn't even supposed to be visiting her. Um, dad really felt that she deserved to have a relationship with her daughter. And her more, more than that, her daughter deserved a relationship with her mom. So she he would allow them to visit on occasion. And uh, he made the faithful decision one night to let mom have Kamari so they could have that relationship. And this is what happened. So um, you got your her pictures there. I'm now going to switch over, though. Um, let me actually do this. Trial started up actually just earlier this week. And let me go through. I'm going to leave this up for day one of the trial. And then we're going to start going through the actual trial. Actually, no, this way so you guys can follow it with me. I have been fighting exactly how to share the information, but I think it's important for us to share exactly what happened and give her that voice that she does deserve to have. Um rather than hide things. So so I'm going to go through this whole case took three days in trial. Um, he actually had said he was guilty. But because this is actually a death penalty case, the law said that he had to go through this trial. And then jury will be able to decide at the end whether or not he will be given the death penalty or not. We do not know that, but we do know he was found guilty, which of course he had said also. So going through this and I'm actually going to leave, okay, this first day I'm going to read to you because it really has a lot of the information. Again, trigger warnings. So District Attorney Rip Chancey began opening statements by telling the jurors that Kamari and her little brother were at Bowman Street in Columbus with their mom, Misty Sipple, who did not have custody of her at the time. Although Jeremy Williams was married, he and Sipple had a relationship centered around drugs and sexual affairs. So that is the guy who was up for um, the trial and then mom. On December 13th, Kamari Holland was reported missing, okay, from mom's place of residence. Um, when they checked, officials checked phone records, they noticed that Sippel and Williams were in contact the night before. Once they ran his name, officials saw him in the system from a few days prior, where a victim reported him as an R suspect. The victim said that he said to her, you give a good fill in the blank, as good as that little girl that I taught to do it. The victim said William said the child was a five-year-old and had a name similar to Cummery. Later testimony reveals he named his five-year-old stepdaughter. So just before Cummery lost her life, there was someone who was reporting him as doing things he should not have been doing to her. We also know, and I'm pretty sure this article goes into it, that he was suspected of killing his own one-month-old daughter a few years before. This monster should not have been free. He should have been in jail or worse, to be honest. And uh, this little girl would still be with us if all of the investigations and trials and stuff had gone the way, okay, we now know what happened. Um, they pinged his cell phone and discovered that he was at the Bamboo Motel on Opelika Road in Phoenix City, 
where he was found smoking meth with his uncle. That's when they took him into custody. Investigators then, okay, took his phone, did an extraction, and the results came back with a series of videos that were taken on December 13th. 13th again being the day that she went missing. Officials found an abandoned home with his name connected to it, and that's when officials found Kamari's body naked on the floor in the basement. Chansey said there were marks all over her, indicating she had been tied up. Chansey said her body was in a stirrup trigger warning position similar to women who go to a gynecologist. He said there was evidence of bleeding and injuries. This is from the trial itself. Later testimony reveals that Sipple mom sold her daughter to Williams for $2,500 for one hour. On December 25th, 2021, Lieutenant Steve Johnson, who is in charge of Russell County Jail, received a call from Jeremy Williams. Williams tells Lieutenant Johnson that he has information to tell him. Lieutenant Johnson goes to the jail to visit Williams and records the five hour conversation. Back in March, okay, this year, Williams pleaded guilty to all four of the counts he was being brought up on, okay, including murder of a person less than 14 years old. He also pleaded guilty to obstruction of a corpse, knowingly recording the acts of S.A. and sodomy. Defense opening statements. So defense is going for death penalty. And gang, I'm sorry, very seldom do I speak this out loud. This is a case that, hell yeah, hell yeah. I'm just going to say that right now. Hell yeah. Okay. And guy, like I said, trigger war. There's a reason why I have this running on the bottom. I wasn't sure whether to go through this whole article or not. Um, but she deserves to have a voice and not have things swept under the rug. And uh, people need to know that this monster has hurt other people before and should never have been able to even hurt her. And we all need to start speaking up when we see something that's wrong. This girl who reported just days before did what she was supposed to do. She heard of something that was heinous and she went and reported it. And that's what needs to happen, guys. Um, five officers did give testimony on what they experienced on the day that she went missing. Details were gut-wrenching and upsetting for anyone, everyone, including the state, in the courtroom. Sergeant Braden Dobbins and Sergeant Jane Edenfield with the Columbus Police Department were asked to ping the cell phones of both Mom and Jeremy Williams. A cell phone ping is, we know what that is, find the nearest uh, tower. Sergeant Dobbins and Sergeant Edenfield assisted with the search warrant of the home on Dozier Street. Sergeant Dobbins was outside of the home on Dozier Street. He was met by William's wife. Sergeant Dobbins said he told the wife that they were there on a missing persons case. He said the wife said that if, quote, anything happened to that little girl, she'll be at an address in Phoenix City, which is where they found her. Quote, it wasn't the statement of what the wife said. It was the look of terror on her face. Sergeant Edenfield said the Columbus Police Department had a checklist they wanted to pursue, like interviewing Williams, who was back in custody. However, Sergeant Dobbins was persistent. Sergeant Dobbins went to Edenfield and said, Sarge, if you had seen this woman's face, the wife's face, we need to go check out Phoenix City now. Okay, now. Okay, forget these investigations and going through your checklist and all that. Get in the car. We need to go check out this residence right now. Sergeant Dobbins said that based on the critical missing persons case, he and Sergeant Jane Edenfield went to 1001 15th Avenue in Phoenix City. As body camera footage of Sergeant Dobbins and Sergeant Edenfield played in the courtroom, Jeremy Williams just looked down and twirled his hair. This is what he did the whole time. They're showing video of what he did 
and his response. Hey, Seal, love you, my dear. Warning, I know you and I've talked already. This is really triggering right now. Um, enough that I put the warning up for things. Um, very warning enough for that. So, um, sorry, just want to keep an eye on things. Um, let's see. Body camera sound. Sergeant Dobbins asked a neighbor if anyone lived at the residence. Neighbor said no one lived there. Sergeant Dobbins, well, that's a body at Enfield. Is it her? Yes. She's naked. Is it real? Yes. It's her. It's her. Sergeant Dobbins, I've got an effing daughter, man. We should have been out here effing hours ago. Teary-eyed. Ed Enfield on the phone. She's dead. She's been fill in the blank. Oh, my God. Anyone who was following her case and her mi going missing for those hours for that day, we were all trying to find people locally were trying to track her down. And, uh, and they end up being the ones who had to find her and try to give her a little bit of privacy after everything was taken away from her. Sergeant Ryan Bardman with the Columbus Police Department was called in into around noon on December 13th and interviewed mom when she was brought in for questioning. Mom claimed she was asleep before Comrie was reported missing. However, no force of entry was made into her house. Sergeant Bardman said he called Williams and attempted to convince him to come back. Williams said he didn't have gas money and hung up on the phone. Yeah, of course he hang up on the phone. He doesn't want to get caught. He just sat there and killed a little girl. He wants to get the hell away, pretty much. Sergeant Vardman said he couldn't reach Williams after that on a phone. Columbus authorities made contact with the earlier victim and conducted an interview to verify her earlier statements. That's when they were able to obtain search warrants on Williams. Lieutenant Steve Johnson with the Russell County Sheriff's Office received a phone call from the defendant on December 25th, Christmas Day. Uh, Lieutenant Johnson said, Williams says he had been doing a lot of praying the night before and wanted to get the information off of his chest and get right with God before he got executed. All of this information was recorded on Christmas Day, the night of Christmas Day by Lieutenant Johnson. Avery and anyone else, guys, I love having you guys in these chats. Take care of yourself. I love and appreciate you guys being in here, but if this becomes too hard, okay, we can speak up and give her, okay, a voice, okay, just with what you've done being here. You take care of yourself. Okay, that's important. And I'm sorry. I know this is hard. As a survivor myself, this is hard. Um, Williams initially talked about the death of his one. Okay, we talked about, and this was one of the things that was popping up initially in the case, as we were hearing that Williams had lost a one-month-old child. And many people had said he was involved in her death. He was never convicted of it or anything. Okay, if he had been, he probably never would have been around to hurt Cummery. Um, Williams told Lieutenant Johnson the medical examiner had ruled the death of his one-month-old ch child in Alaska as a medical emergency with her intestines. However, he told Johnson that he knew it was from something he had done. Williams told Johnson that when a child would cry, it enraged him. So he would punch his one-month-old baby in the head and throw her down the stairs. He also talked about how he molested his five-year-old stepdaughter on a daily basis. He told Lieutenant Johnson that he met Kamari's mom through a mutual friend in April or May of 2021, and they would often smoke meth together and engage in sexual activity. 
William said he was able to afford meth by taking advantage of the PPP loans given out before because of COVID. And, uh, uh, sorry, let me come over here to chat. Yeah, I will never understand how they get away with this. And that's the reason why I decide we need to talk this one through. Because if people hadn't let go after the first time, Kamari would be alive right now. But people let go because they don't want to even think about bad stuff happening. So they just let it go. We can't let things go. The victims need a voice. And uh, um, Williams told Lieutenant Johnson that Christy asked Williams to babysit Kamari and her brother while she'd go out on call, okay, and work. Williams said he was shocked Christy allowed him to babysit, considering he told her that he liked to perform, okay, acts with small children. That already tells me, oh my God. On December 13th, William said mom was at home and knew Kamari was living, leaving with him because they had previously agreed on him paying $2,500 for one hour of Kamari's time. Williams admitted he was never going to pay her because he didn't have the money, but he knew Christy wouldn't call the police because she had committed the crime also. Cat Mama. That was one of the biggest issues a lot of us had. It was pretty evident, but unfortunately, this is the problem. If you can't pull a case together enough, someone goes free. And that's what happened in this case. And yeah, Avery, exactly. And yet other people couldn't get the loan. Yeah, won't even go there, but that's true. Williams admitted, okay, we went through that. Williams said he left from Sipple's house and went to his Columbus address. He said his wife witnessed him there with Kamari and she made him leave the house. That's when he went to the 15th Avenue house in Phoenix City. On the day that, way there, Williams told Johnson that he showed Kamari P and that she was going to do the same acts on him. However, Kamari said she is not going to do this and he punched her in the head. Please leave, my dear. Please, it, guys, please. I, yeah. I'm actually going to skip a bunch of this right here. You can read the rest in this. Actually, I'm going to leave that part because I'm just, I can't. I can't. That penalty is not, that penalty is too good for this guy, plain and simple. And uh, now we're going to go to day two. Day two, one was probably the hardest of all the different days of trial. Day two, I'm going to show you the video from the news from day two, because we get to hear from mom. Mom, who in my eyes is as guilty as he is. Okay, and she made deals, so she gets treated differently. But she's as guilty, if not more so. So here we go. Our top story out of East Alabama, more shocking and heartbreaking testimony in the trial of the man accused of the murder and sexual assault of five-year-old Kamari Holland. The medical examiner and others taking the stand today in the trial of Jeremy Williams. He's pleaded guilty to the gruesome crimes and a jury is deciding if he will get the death penalty. Newsletter 9's East Alabama reporter Justin Brown joins us live from the Russell County Courthouse with more details from inside the courtroom. So Justin, you have been following this trial from the beginning and we understand three more witnesses took the stand today. Tell us more about today's testimony. Well, Barbara, Jason, you're right. Three more witnesses did uh, come to testify today, called by the state. Uh, those three are uh, Jody Sellers, the Russell County Circuit Clerk, uh, Dr. David Rodesky, he's a, he's a forensic pathologist, and then uh, Heidi Groman from the Department of Family and Children's Services. On December 13th, 2021, five-year-old Kamari Holland was found dead in an abandoned Phoenix City home. Holland was sold to Jeremy Williams by her mother for $2,500 for one hour of oral sex only. Williams admits to not having any intention of paying the money and... How do you even report on this? That's the problem. 
how do you even report on this? Okay, uh, it's, and the police, that's what I, I can't, they can't unsee what they saw. Her dad is never going to get his little baby back. Raped, strangled, and ultimately murdered five-year-old Holland. The state brought forth three more witnesses in today's proceedings, two of them being a medical examiner and DFAX employee from the Russell County Department of Human Resources. Their testimony pointed to the evidence the state is using to build their case against Williams. During the testimony, Dr. David Rudesky is the medical examiner who performed the autopsy and toxicology report on five-year-old Kamari Holland, seen here in pictures with her mother, Christy Sippel. Rudesky told the court he found methamphetamine in Kamari's system. He also says Kamari was tied up, beaten, raped, and strangled to death, matching details from Williams' confession. Another witness, Heidi Groman from DHR, seen here in a gray blazer, taking the stand saying she received reports of drugs. So this, we're also hearing now that she was drugged. He basically was trying to treat her the way he would any old friend. Yeah. Okay, this is how I ha hang out with all my friends and all that. So yeah, I'm going to do the same with a five-year-old. Her, his dad, her dad is torn up. And if you go back to it, like I said, he wanted to give his daughter that relationship that every little girl needs with her mom. Okay, I mean, he, he amazing father, amazing father. Hey, Amy, love you, my dear. This is just so you know, this has been really a triggering one, just that drug abuse by Kamari's mother. She says that's when Corey Holland was granted custody of both Kamari and her younger sibling. She also confirmed both children were having contact with Sipple for a period of time, although Sipple was not granted custody. Witness testimony is expected to be finished on Friday, followed by closing arguments. More details on testimony and on the discussion of what happened inside the courtroom will be posted on our website at WTVM.com. For now, live in Phoenix City, Justin Brown for WTVM, News Leader 9. Yeah, really a heartbreaking case and, and hard to hear to some of these mom. details coming they out. Kind of bring in mom. All right, thank you, Justin. Because this trial has just been for Williams. Mom, it will be a different thing. And all, um, but they did want to bring mom in. And for those of you who heard me at the beginning talking about the gifts and stuff like that, uh, the Christmas gifts and everything. This is that video. Justin, in addition to Williams, Kamari Holland's very own mother is behind bars in connection to her death. Yeah, just last month, Christy Sippel accepting a guilty plea deal to her charges related to the case. Sippel pleading guilty to human trafficking charges where she could face up to 20 years in jail, be registered as a sex offender, pay more than $10,000 in fines. She also agreed to testify against Jeremy Williams. You may remember just one day after Kamari Holland's body was found, Sipple stopped by Deb I still wonder what bitch love ya girl. Oh my God, retro. I love you, my dear. Mwah. Love you guys so much, so, so much. And uh, um, love you, my dear. Um, one thing that has always frustrated me in this case, and it sounds like with all the information they had as to what was going on, why did mom get the plea deal? In all honesty, I'm sorry. Um, that lady did not deserve any deal whatsoever. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, Alabama fought to try him because he crossed over here to Phoenix. Yep. It crossed over state lines for that, for sure, and all. So. WTVM Studios to drop off what would have been Kamari's Christmas presents for our toy drive. Here's a look at that exclusive interview. I'm Kamari Holland's mommy, and she wouldn't want nothing in the world but to donate her toys to another little child that was in need because she was a very healthy child. I'm a mommy, and I did not have nothing to do with this. <laughs> Sorry. She was my life. I lived for her daily. She was my only girl. I had three boys at her. Yeah. She should not have been given a deal. It sounds to me like they had more than enough, okay, evidence to get whatever they needed. Okay, it sounds to me like it. I might be wrong. I don't, I didn't see the case as it came together this way, but 
any woman who can sit there and make these oh yes i like that in the bushes i like that totally uh because trust me i've got so many so many things that i'd like to say to her right now okay and uh you guys have no idea how much i'm just like hmm. how can anyone hurt their child how can anyone hurt their child how can anyone accept two thousand five hundred dollars for someone else to hurt their child. Okay. Um, he held her. Are you talking about mom? And uh, because, yeah, I do hear there was some things. However, I don't think any of that came in with the trial from what I'm hearing so far. We'll find out in just a second. So there were definitely some things in this case. I, I don't know. I just have major Issues with now, in court proceedings, we learned that Williams yes, was to pay Sipple exactly. $2,500 for creative swearing is very, very well accepted and encouraged in this case. Oral sex with Kamari. No word yet on a sentencing date for Sipple. We will continue to follow all of the details in this case, including such a those beautiful court child. Afro Matt Falcone second. So, so that was day two. Day two of the case. Um, the big things during that was um, what we saw within everything there. Let me just real quickly. Um, and if you go to the first link that I shared with you, you'll be able to go through all this if you want to look deeper into the case because it is hard for me to keep reading what I was reading. It was really getting hard to do. Um, like I mentioned, he had pleaded guilty back in March, which meant he waived all his rights and all that, but he had to go through the actual um case uh trial because of everything going on um some of the things that are mentioned i'm not going to read the full article but a couple areas that were discussed is as the um they had doctors there that day on day two and during that jeremy williams niece and i i feel for his family i do feel for his family um to know that someone that you're related to or care about can do something so vile it's got to be hard for them and uh so as the doctor was describing Kamari's injuries uh his niece sat in the courtroom and during that she was extremely in their word visibly disgusted she was wincing at the details and at a point she actually left the courtroom okay she just could not kind of like a few minutes we just it's like no we gotta leave um outside of that um that was most of it uh they do all did also talk this happened i think it was two years ago if i recall uh let me double check that real quickly I don't want to accidentally say something and be wrong about it. Uh, 2021. So, yeah, just over two years ago. Hey, Chase, how you doing, my dear? <laughs> Most straight. There you go. Uh, Amy, what was Amy? You raised four kids and you got angry sometimes when they were there, but never. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. She wanted the money. Yeah, she. Yeah, that's what she did. She sold them for drugs basically $2,500 for one hour with this guy um and as he said he never planned on paying because he knew that well all he had to do was say well why should I pay you you just committed a crime so I'll just go to the police and I'll tell them so the amount of just disgusting human not even human forget it, monsters in this case is ridiculous um they also did they discuss it discussed with the department of human resources about the custody setup and all and dh uh department of human resources had granted custody of both of the children to dad kamari's dad um and had a court order that mom was to have no contact with the kids. However, like I said, 
Uh, Dad had allowed mom to have contact on more than one occasion, including, unfortunately, on that one day. Um, I think he thought what a lot of parents do. I, I see someone trying, maybe she was trying things like that, and I want her to have that relationship. And it was a decision that he probably will regret the rest of his life, but it was a decision that he probably made thinking it was helping his little, a five-year-old is wanting to develop that relationship with their mother. And I'm sure that was in his mind. And all. So um, he did pay her something. Okay, got it, got it. I can't remember that part or not. So um, so day three now. Um, day three, we had one final witness. Okay, this was a witness who knew Jeremy when she herself was five years old. Okay, um. The lady is now 23 years old, and at the time that she knew him, she was five. Um, they said she, when she took the stand, she was very timid, and in a tearful testimony, the victim said that he had assaulted her orally as well as essayed her. When asked how she knew how to do what he had done to her, she said he taught her. Now, this is a 23-year-old who did this, had this happen to her when she was five. How many years has he been doing this? How many other children did he hurt? We know he most likely killed his own one-month-old baby. How many other people had their lives destroyed because of him? Um, the state asked why she did not report this to anyone else. Um, before being contacted by the Phoenix police. And she replied, I was scared of what might happen. He might hurt my mom or things would get worse than they already were. Um, his brother, William's brother, had tears rolling down his face, attempting not to listen while he covered his ears. He then left the courtroom and did not reenter. So we've had two different days with two different family members who could not make it through listening to what their family member did to other children and all. Um, the state showed a photo of the little, the 23 year old as a five year old and asked if that was the age the assault happened to her. And she said, yes, that's how old I was. That is me at the time that he did what he did. This was actually in Phoenix. Okay. Not, uh, F-E-N-I-X, Alabama, I think it was. Okay, uh, there's Phoenix City. So not Phoenix. Okay, yeah, different Phoenix. And uh, with that last word that, yes, that was me when this happened to me. Okay, that everything finished. The state rested its case at that time. Welcome, exotic prayer. Welcome, my dear. And all uh, um, closing our arguments came into play at that point. The state pretty much went through from what I have here, and I'm trying not to read this because of how detailed so much of this does get. Um, I had pulled it up on the screen earlier. Like I said, please feel free to go to the link if you want to. Um, the state said we've had people say all we need to do now is put up the pictures. They didn't need to talk, okay? They did not need to go through and reiterate everything. All they had to do was pull up the pictures. Pictures of what happened to Kamari. Pictures of what happened to other people. And, uh, um, you know, Avery, why don't we do this one time? Maybe you and I can come revisit this case because I actually got to finish this live up. I've got to leave for rehearsal in about 15 minutes. So um, I want to give you enough time. So let's perhaps contact me, contact me, um, put a, send me an email or contact me on Facebook and let's talk a little bit because I would love to have you come up. I just don't want to have to shut everything down real quickly in the middle of this because again, like I said, she deserves to have 
her whole story told. And uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, good question, Chase, if anyone's going to San Antonio. I do know, for example, the Caleb bit, they are trying to push towards that. But yeah, Avery, please feel free, though, because I don't mind. It's just, yeah, I've got rehearsal. i got to be at the theater at 6 o'clock. So I, I actually set my alarm for 5.45 just in case I went too long. But yeah, thank you, Avery. Thank you. Um, so they finished up their stuff, went through the four charges. The four charges were capital murder for the murder of a child less than 14 years old, capital murder on one count of kidnapping, capital murder on a count of essay, capital murder on one count of, um, well, one count of sodomy, first degree. No other way for me to put that word. And uh, um, Jared, then they said Jeremy Williams killed Kamari intentionally. He put his hands around her neck and squeezed for 10 to 15 minutes, face to face, as she took her last breaths. This is the little girl, and pulled up a picture. This is the little girl we are talking about. A five-year-old little girl. She was the one who was sold for $2,500. This is the little girl that was kidnapped. This was the girl who was essayed for over two hours. He then took his hands, put them around her neck, and strangled her. This angel baby did not deserve this. End quote. Aw, thanks, happy hippie. Thank you. Love you. And I hate my voice. <laughs> I hate my voice. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. And, uh, um, and definitely. Um, the defense then came with their closing arguments. Um, defense thanked everyone for their time. He said because of Alabama law, the trial had to continue before there was a death penalty. He said, quote, Mr. Williams didn't even want y'all to have to be here. He pleaded guilty, but that's Alabama law. Yeah. The defense asked the jury to go back and look at all the elements and evidence that was pre presented and see how it applied to the charges. DA Rick Chancey talks about the night he got the phone call on December 13th, 2021. And what he saw that night will forever live in his memory. As he talks to the jury, he said, quote, I'm so sorry you'll have that image forever frozen in your mind. They say pictures are worth a thousand words, but that's not true with the sound of the videos you had to watch. You've now seen it and heard it. I think we owe it to her as a society to know what she went through. That's guys, that's actually why I started off sharing the full articles. Um, I think we owe it to her as a society to know what she went through. I hope we never forget Kamari Holland. Um, then he finished saying we did it. Russell County, y'all did it. They came together and they, they gave her a voice and they did not stop until that guilty verdict came in. And uh, DA Rick Chancey says he can't think of a word that describes Jeremy Williams, but the only word he can come up with now is guilty. BMF is guilty. Those are my words. And uh, um, what I want to do to finish this live is listen to her dad. Her dad, her knight in shining army, armor. I don't know how many of you guys remember maybe being a little girl or a guy. Okay, but I know it's a little girl. My dad was my prince in shining armor. He was my, I remember dancing on his toes and stuff like that. And this is who was Kamari's shining ar knight in shining, shining armor. This is a little hard to hear um, volume wise, but I wanted to play his interview after the guilty verdict came through. Yeah, I'm still hurt behind what happened to my daughter, but seeing that justice was finally served, I'm deeply grateful, especially for all the jurors to see it our way. Thank you. It looks different for you. And, you know, um, I see that you have on a shirt commemorating the memory of your daughter. 
What would you say to her if you had final words with her? Princess, I'm going to always love you. You're always going to be the reason I want to strive to be better. And your brothers and sisters will be well taken care of. soft I'm sorry guys I came the first day but hearing everything that happened to her which threw me in a deep depression stage I wasn't able to come Thursday because I didn't want to see the videos and the pictures and stuff this guy for those of you who haven't been able to follow on Facebook he has gone through the grieving process publicly he's had to come to terms with this publicly saying happy birthday over all these missed birthdays to his little princess and he's a strong man he's a strong man he's a really strong man but i wasn't gonna miss this and definitely not monday <laughs> What is the next step? Well, I start school um, April 18th. I want to get into like helping the youth out. So I go for like early childhood development. So from there forth, if I'm doing any and everything to help youth out and prevent stuff like this from happening. And does this verdict give you any kind of peace? Like it was well needed, but I don't. I will never have peace without having Kamari here, especially how she went. So it helped, but nothing. So he'll go forward. He'll make something of his life to support other kids who've been through rough things, and all. But yeah, there's never peace. We'll change the fact that Kamari need is needed here. Yeah. Corey, C-O-R-E-Y, Holland, H-O-L-L-A-N-D. Prayers for the whole Holland family, for her brother. Once again, thank you to all the law enforcement, Sheriff Heath Taylor, and everybody that helped him with bringing this day forth. I've got something I just Matt realized Falcone, I'm going to share with you guys as we close this today. I think I still have it. It was something I think I remember. Give me a second to pull it up. Um, but yeah, keeping his her family in your thoughts and prayers, especially right now. There's so many families that right now are hurting. Um, I think I have it. Let me see if I can find. There was a video. There it is. Give me just a second to pull it. Okay. I'm going to take out the volume on this because I do know it's a no-no song, but this is a memorial tribute that was put together for her. And, uh, and I wish I had some, actually, I think I can do some, let me pull it up. Okay, here we go. So this was Kamari's tribute video. Such a sweetheart.
wait to remember the little one. Sorry, I wanted to check Crystal. I, I see what you just said. by her family during her memorial service and I still had it saved on my hard drive. Each of these people that had their life forever changed. They've got the little memories of the little princess who loved pink. justice um her family got justice we still have mom to deal with and all but that's that's one step and all want to thank all of you guys who stuck with me tonight through that that was a really hard case it's been a hard case since day one it's one of the few times that i literally broke down in public when the word came out that mom had been arrested i literally broke down in public um and did a short real quickly about it and uh um i'll let you guys know of any updates that pop up further on jillian and veronica but it does look like we are hearing that they may have been shot according to news nation blake and london devon there may be remains but we will find out about that so i want to say thank you guys so so much um you know what let me check something you know what don't leave yet don't leave guys i'm gonna do something right now since i got a couple of you guys still in here you guys have stuck all the way through the end so i'm gonna give away some memberships right now so get ready make sure that you are here and let people know that if you know of anyone they've got about a minute before i give them away and then i'm giving out all these memberships well i'll give five of them away and also uh, we're at the halfway mark part of the month so it works out for me and uh, um and then you guys can follow me we're also on facebook now please join us over at the local my life on facebook um just doing a lot more discussing over there about cases as well as discord as usual um so please come join us over on both of those places no cristola normally i would have picked up what you just sent me and talked about but i literally got to be at rehearsal in 30 minutes so yes cristola is working on membership uh stickers i can't wait and also okay i've given you guys a few minutes for that so <sighs> let's see how it goes oh yay we got retro here too yes maybe we could get retro one by the way retro thanks thanks so much for sending everyone over here i really appreciate it oh actually we're gonna do this to celebrate let's see did we get to celebrate this I was literally eight away from my next thing. Let's see. Did I hit it? Ah, no, I did not. Okay, we're not celebrating that. I'm four away from 1,800. So if you can send four more subs over my way, guys, I'm at 1,800. I'm giving away the memberships anyhow. Let's do it. 
I have 10 to give left. We'll do five today and five when we hit 1800 next time. So here we go. Who gets it? 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 Okay, sorry. Oh, Cristola, thanks for sharing those out. That is our Discord and our YouTube group. And uh, who got one? We've got, let's see, Avery got one. Yes. Chris got one. Aunt Clara got one. Mama K got one. Yes. And shouldn't there be one more? I gave five. Oh, wait. One, two. That was all five. So congratulations to everyone who got a membership. For those of you who didn't, hey, thank you, YouTube. And... When we hit 1,800 subs, I'll give out some more of those for sure. And also, I'm also in the process. I came up with this idea when I was up for my mom's uh, birthday weekend. I'm going to go down to the beach one day, and I'm going to pick up a bunch of little shells. I picked up about eight of them already. And then later on, I might send a couple of you guys some shells so you can have something from Hawaii. So. Love all of you guys. Thank you all so much for joining us today. And let me pull this up. And I will see you on Monday. Aloha. Goodbye, guys.